in this holy month of Safa, Subhanahu man huwa alimul hakim, the app, download the app, click on the month Safar then the realities and the zikr of Safar is a guidance from only Allah that in the house of commons people can do whatever they like. And they follow guidance from Surah 1 through 12, each month has a tajalli and each month has a dress upon the servant of the Divine. Those whom Allah want to guide Rush, Rushidan, we have in Farsi to become Rushd, Aghasi from Rashidin guidance. Kamilin wa Rashidin, what we say in Jumma, means also for us is rushed is to be ripened. That you're not green, uh, everything green, but Allah want you to mature and to be in the way of rijal and from rijal from ibadullah, ibadullah highest. Because Allah gave them ayn and gave them knowledges, ancient knowledges. Rijal they are in training to receive that reality. So means that this holy month is dress, is that Allah want to bestow upon these house of lords, these lofty souls in which He has destined for them guidance of a higher understanding. So means the cave at the front is telling them the adab. Those who go back and they read verse by verse to understand. The beginning is the adab and warning from Allah that uh, don't do bad, ask for this kitab to come into you, warn them from badness. Now have you heard about Ashab al-Kahf? And the details of Ashab al Kaf and that they submitted themselves for their Lord, and Allah placed upon them a veil on their hearing. We talked today right before the zikr. Why would a veil on hearing have to do with you becoming closed eyes and annihilating in Divinely Presence? Why Allah didn't say, I put a veil on their eyes and they slept for 309 years? The sleepers of the cave, the sleepers of Fisus in Christianity was from old ancient reality. These seven sleepers Allah described that they, they left the negativity of the physical world and the demonic desire from it, they gave from their status away to run towards the Divinely Presence. We talked about the mannerisms of that cave that Every testing comes to see if you're wild. Then Allah said, if you're passing the testing and they're continuously in life bombarding and SubhanAllah as soon as this month opened all this craziness all over the world and all over the spiritual world of the internet. Where every tariqah is now jumping back and forth and fighting and yelling and all the dogs come out. The ones who want to show their real characteristic. You're groveling and barking, and wow, 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 real vashi, real crazy. When this month if they were trained correctly, they should have been trained, stay quiet, definitely don't participate in fitna because you're being tested by a higher source. As soon as you stay quiet, you understand Allah want to give you something and begin to describe that, I'm going to put a veil on their hearing and put them into submission been the importance of the people of Samina Watan. They are a nation in which they hear and they obey and that the importance of the ears and the soul. The ears are the door to the soul and you can manipulate the soul through the door. And the eyes are the window of the soul, you can darken the soul through the eyes. So it means then what shaitan is sending upon the eyes of people is continuous darkness, things you should be not looking at and they're coming bombarding the soul, bombarding the heart. 
But what Allah drew our attention in this holy surah is their ears were veiled and they went into their annihilation. So then the importance of the ears, how to discipline the ears and the importance in tafakkur and contemplation that anyone who wants to be from that understanding they must be living a life of contemplation, of meditation, of tafakkur. If you don't stop to smell the roses, life has already passed you by. You're going too fast through the process and that you're not slowing down to contemplate, to smell the fragrance of every reality that Allah is giving. As soon as they take a path they want to contemplate, they slow down. They read a little bit and meditate, they contemplate. Then they've been taught by their shaykhs that there's a tremendous secret on your ears that every time you sit and make tafakkur listen to salawats, don't leave your ear to be unattended. Shaitan will enter in through your ear and begin to put every type of negativity into your ear and you think you're receiving inspiration and you've already been fooled. Inspiration does not come through the ear. You're not waiting to hear something from your ear because that's going to be shaitan whispering. So you put salawats on your ear, you're going to hear through your consciousness. Hearing at this level is through the soul. When you hear something pleasant and you're listening to Qur'an and you're listening to salawat, you're listening to these beatific praisings, you're allowing them to put you into a heart. You begin to feel a beatific breeze and energy and this energy is moving on to your hearing, moving into the hearing and begin to emanate within the soul like a heart. When they can reach a state of feeling that beatific energy, every inspiration come to the soul at that level. When they're hearing that beatific energy, they're feeling that energy. Then when they begin to contemplate ayatul Qur'an that they read that, Ya Rabbi expand my understanding or from the Kalam al-Awliya, the, the books of Awliyaullah they read and it's alive. It must be at every moment giving more knowledge, unfolding. It's not one sentence, one sentence will infinitely unfold in the depth of its reality that cannot be comprehended. So means that when they're meditating then they stop and contemplate and that's what Allah is describing, these are the Ahlul Tafakkur. None of you understand except the people of Tafakkur because they read Ayatul Qur'an and they sit and contemplate and they hear the Qur'an is playing in the background, they're, they're concentrating on what's being recited and it begins to inspire into their heart and their soul and speak to them and begin to teach them. So then Allah draw attention that we veiled their ear and they went out. Then describes the sleepers that they don't move and the sunshine comes, they move to the right, the sunshine, they move to the left and we described in the Shams al-Arafeen this whole way of teaching is based on the superiority of the secret of the sun. Shamsun diya wa qamaran nuran. The qamar takes from the reflection of the diya. So means the powerful one is the sun, the one who follows is the moon. The nur is the reflection of the diya, the diya is a fire and sun has two noons in his name and in the center is a sir, is a secret. Nurr anwar wa sirat al asrar. Because their diya is an asrar, is a, is a star. They have to be a star, a star is a fire. It's the source of the first noon. If they're going to be nurani, they must have a, a heart that lit like a shams because their heart is on fire, burning bright as a result of that divinely fire within their heart. Of course their face like a moon shines out all the light and at that time they are reaching towards Kamil. Now their two noons are lit 
and the sir, the scene within their insan is fully activated because the scene has the three ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen, haqq yaqeen. So their secret is lit and open. So means this insan and that reality of the sun is then the highest of the suns, the highest of the stars in all this universe is Sayyidina Muhammad So Shamsul Arafeen is about that reality of the sun sending its light, the planet, the star that sends its light and everything is orbiting around that reality. So then the sleepers, this level of awliyaullah which there are seven of them on this earth. And one lion who guards the gate, these seven souls take from that reality and Allah describe them in a code for people that they don't move without the isharat of the sun. They move left, they move right. Means they're in such a taslim, their whole being is in, in taslim because they describe your taslim should be like a dead body. Don't show any will, even more than a dead body because dead body will complain if you wash it with cold water. So awliya come and say, no you should be more than even that, just in submission. So Allah described these sleepers that they're in complete taslim, they wait for the isharat of the sun. They move right, they move left based on the command. So where we saw in Laylatul Qadr, wa malaikati wa ruh. Kulin amr, salamun hiya hatta middha al fajr. Every amr is coming from that sun, not the sun of this earth, the sun of the entire universe. The, every angel and the ruh is waiting for the command of that sun and then disperses all the commands. What they understood of the command is what they call a photon, the energy from the sun. They saw that this photon penetrates everything. Allah described that photon as a tariq, piercing. The am of Allah nothing stops it. You can't build a mountain that stops God's command. You can't dig an earth where the command doesn't come. You can't build a metal cage where the photon doesn't go. So the order comes from the reality of the soul that it's at that station, it sends the command to the angels because, Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul wa Ulul Amri minkum. Under the Ulul Am are the malaika, they're waiting for the command and the photon then moves and the command moves throughout this entire galaxy and universe. With everything that Allah wanted, the photon hits the leaf and it got its orders from above, how it's supposed to grow, when it's supposed to die, when it's supposed to live, what is its purpose? And Allah said, there's nothing out of His hisab. So means that this sun, this power, this way is the sleepers of the cave. How to reach towards that reality and the seven that hold that reality, one on right ear, one on the left ear, one on the right eye, one on the left eye, one on the nostril, one on the tongue, one, two, three, four, five, six and one that controls. Means they stand at seven positions and carrying the seven holy essences of Allah They carry that reality and they are from the the people of the holy face and so in, in the surah also describes them. It's like it just put in the middle of the, the beginning of the surah where it's asking Prophet don't pass these people by whom their whole face is for zikrullah, that don't leave your face from remembering them, their whole wujud is for zikrullah, don't pass them by what they call the people of the bench that their whole life is for the face of Allah and asking Allah asking Prophet don't pass them by, yani don't leave your nazar off them. Their, the nobleness of their souls are continuously feeding off of your nazar 
They're relying upon that nazar of Prophet that nourishes them, dress them, bless them and then begin to describe now the story of Sayyidina Musa because it goes now into how to accompany them. Sayyidina Musa someone whom is Kalimullah and he speaks to Allah can you imagine then this path that Allah wants is going to be based on extreme humility and humiliation. Humility is not when we say we're humble but when Allah humiliates us. Nabi Musa was one whom speaks to Allah he said, I want to see you Ya Rabbi. He knows who he's talking to and he knows that it's not Allah said, I want to see you. He said, if you can see me, I'm going to send my reflection upon the mountain. And Nabi Musa looked and they said, Qahsha, he died, annihilated completely into dust in that reality. And awliyaullah come and teach that the glory of Allah is Nabi Musa salam saw the ruhaniyat and light of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result out cold. From that point on Nabi Musa salam left everything. He, ta- he took Yeshua and said, Ya Rabbi I don't want to stop until the two rivers meet of La ilallah Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I want a higher Rashidah, I want a knowledge higher. From my state in which I'm at, Kalimullah, I want to rushed, I want to be more guided in what you want to give to me. What I witness is something of an unimaginable reality. Means they put it in, a, in an understanding for us, very basic English. You go back read the ayatul Qur'an and you find how Kalimullah dropped lev- and left everything for that reality. And then Allah said, I'll send you to one of my servants whom had a rahmah, attained his rahmah and then we taught him knowledges. Not he studied fiqh and then he became a wali, it's actually the reverse. If you study too much you actually become very hard and the rahmah never enters to you and you're aggressive and you write horrific letters and you're out and yelling and screaming and using your tongue and your fingers against the awliyaullah. That's not what Allah described, said that, that he attained a rahmah, means what? He was dressed by a Muhammadan light. Of course that Muhammadan light is going to come with ulumul awwaleen wa akhireen, every knowledge will be bestowed into the heart of that Muhammadan light. That is what Nabi Musa wanted, I want that reality, I will not stop until I reach where the two rivers meet of La ilallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and the meeting point with Yeshua he's walking, we said many years this story, maybe sometimes it will click for us. He went with Yeshua with the dried fish, he went, 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 said, now I'm hungry. What happened? Let's have some lunch. He says, Ajeeb and the word is Ajeeb in Qur'an, says, it's Ajeeb, when we were back where the rock was, I put the dead fish down, huti, and it jumped into the water. So if you don't have tafakkur, you think this is a real interesting story of dried fish jumping in oceans. It's not about a dried fish. Today, today, right now, how do you use Holy Qur'an? Awliyaullah come and teach you, no, that was a big sign for Sayyidina Musa salam, that you're going to come to this people of Al Hayat, they have a special dress upon them. Their muhi al qulub that they inherit from Sayyidina Muhammad Muhi al qulub that they're going to revive your dead heart. And as soon as he walked by the fish, it came to life, went into the water, went back into the water. So, La ilaha illallah, hey wow, hey wow connects to what? Because it's not broken. Because La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, right? So the hay of hidayat 
with the wall of wudud actually connects to the mim. So if you stop at the mim, it's Allahumma. Allahumma. So why do you say Allahumma? They say it means Allah. No, it doesn't mean Allah. Allah means Allah. What's Allahumma? Allahumma, Allahumma, Allahumma. It's not Allah. Allah is Allah. So Allah illallah. Hey, wow, to the mim. Then Muhammadun Rasulullah, it unfolds all its realities. Nabi Musa said, I want this who? I want to know more about this hadi. This guy that you just showed me un unveiled all his lights unto, unto me, I want to understand that reality. And that hair is also like a cave and inside the cave has a wow because we're on the cave month and everybody has to enter into the cave. And Nabi Musa wanted the cave and the tajari for the month, subhanahu man huwa alimun hakeem. This is a month in which Allah is going to test and as a result of the test He's going to give them knowledge and wisdom of what Sayyidina Musa wanted to achieve of that reality. So that I want from that reality where the fish came alive and they said, don't then judge the association of only Allah based on their beards and their colors of their jubba, but on how fresh and alive their garden is. Because they inherit from that reality. Means the garden that's alive, that the souls are coming to life as a result of their life, they're blossoming and blooming. And they have a himma and hidayat, they have all of that love for Sayyidina Muhammad So it's not what you judge to think, oh that one's like this, this one like that. Allah giving the criteria, no. When Nabi Musa got his sign was from the people of Hayat. There are souls out there that they revive the dead and they're dressed from that tajalli and they can, if they can bring a dead fish to life, that fish is symbolic of the soul. They can bring the soul's reality back and that that soul become prosperous and swimming in the oceans of La ilaha Muhammadun Rasulullah SubhanAllah Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Muhammadin Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Basir Surat Al Fatiha Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.